Hey everyone, so you guys asked me time and time again to have a look at the V-Motor M100 and here it is. And you guys wanted to know how I thought it compared to some of my other favorite uh, around ear portable headphones like the Audio-Technica M50X. Well, what do I think? You're watching Lachlan Likes A Thing and let's find out. 41 awesome people helped make this review happen, thanks. Hey everyone and welcome to Lachlan Likes A Thing, the show where I take a thing and see whether or not I like it. Now the thing we're looking at in this video is the V-Motor M100 and I got a pair of these around ear portable headphones along with the XL memory pads which were also highly recommended. And those are the ear pads that you see that are fitted on this headphone right now. Now I got these shipped from Amazon uh, in the US to Australia and all up including the ear pads it cost 305 US dollars, which is about par on course for a higher end um, portable around ear headphone these days. Um, and thank you once again to everyone who contributed to make this review happen. So let's start with the design. Now, uh, like the rest of V-Motor's range, this headphone has a really nice mix of metals and plastics used throughout the uh, construction of this headphone. Everything feels quite nicely put together, so uh, the headband mechanism, the adjustment mechanism, uh, has this nice satisfying tactile click to it. When you fold up the headphone into this little compact shape, it clicks into place. Feels really, really good. The headband itself, it feels like you could twist this headband anywhere you wanted uh, and it would take a lot of stress. So the iPhone 6 can kind of eat its heart out looking at that headband. The one kind of problem I have with this design is that if you look at the headband yoke, the arms on the uh, headband where it joins the ear cup. These metal parts, even though they're metal, they are quite thin and they do seem to be a more vulnerable part of the headphone. And particularly uh, where the headband kind of slots into the ear cup, that looks like a point where it could easily pop out. So if you compare the M100 to something like the M50X, you can see that the M50X, uh, even though it's made mostly out of plastic, there are some design elements which I think are more sensible than on the M100. Everything is much more chunky. This is a design that's, you know, been used in studios for decades and it has been tried and tested in terms of durability. So, I tend to think that the M50X is still a more durable headphone despite its use of less premium materials. So, like I showed you before, the M100 folds up into this nice little compact shape and you just pop it into one of the excellent carrying cases that V-Motor includes with this headphone. The one problem I have with this carrying case is that you must detach the cable in order to stow away the headphone and in order to put the cable into the case you actually have to fold it up into quite a, a tight little coil in order to fit it into the space that they provide. This wouldn't be such a huge problem in the grand scheme of things but one really frustrating thing about this cable is that it's one of V-Motor's braided fabric cables and honestly I hate these cables because they just uh, develop kinks really easily. Uh, the cable has a lot of memory and because you're going to be coiling it up to put into the case you're just going to end up with kinks every single time. The other thing about this fabric cable is that I've noticed the fabric, the orange fabric uh, braid has begun to fray a little which is not something you really want to see. So let's move on to comfort and we'll start with the ear pads. So the V-Motor M100 comes stock with these ear pads as you can see here. Now these standard ear pads are quite comfortable but they are somewhat shallow. So what you'll find is that your ear might touch the inside of the headphone and after a few hours, uh, your ears might get a bit sore. Um, other than that, the actual ear pads themselves are quite soft and supple and decently comfortable. Now you can get uh, the XL pads. Uh, they just come for something like $20. Uh, they are much deeper, as you can see. They give your ears a lot more room to breathe. They apparently are meant to increase noise isolation as well. Uh, I felt like that, that was the case when I tried the XL pads. Um, and also your ears won't touch the back of the driver, so they're a little more comfortable in that regard. The one thing is though, that because these ear pads are a lot thicker, when you put them on your head, you actually get a stronger sense of clamping pressure from these ear pads. Uh, I found that it immediately, as soon as you put them on, 
the stock pads are a little more comfortable, but for long-term listening, the XL pads are the more comfortable of the two. So the M100 weighs 280 grams, and the clamping pressure, both with the stock pads and the XL pads, is such that it's not uncomfortable, but you're not going to forget that you have the M100 on your head. Um, in terms of actual fit, they are a comfortable headphone, but they're not kind of pillows on your head like the uh, Bose QC25. And I actually think they're a little less comfortable than the M50X in that regard. In terms of noise isolation, the M100 actually is a ported design. You can see that they have actually quite large ports on the side. I would say noise isolation is below average. And even with the XL pads, noise isolation is only around average. Um, so again, this is not ideal for really noisy commutes, especially on trains and that kind of thing. So let's talk about the sound of the M100. And I have to say that I was a little worried about what to expect with the M100 because a lot of you were saying, you're gonna love the M100, Lachlan, you really should listen to this headphone. You like warmer headphones. But when I reviewed the V-Motor XS, I really didn't like the sound of the XS. Um, it wasn't terrible, but it just had a really forward vocal section, which I found just a little unnatural. It was a little honky in tone. And some people said that the M100 sounds quite similar to the XS in that regard. So I was a bit worried. I'm happy to report, now that I've listened to the M100, I like the sound of the M100. Yes, it still has that kind of characteristic uh, rawness to the vocals. Uh, there's a particularly somewhat nasal or honky tone to the vocals or the, the mids that is still present on the M100. But I do believe it is toned down compared to the XS. And the other thing is that the mid bass and the bass has a lot more fullness and a lot more heft uh, to it on the M100. So in the actual mix of sounds in relative proportion the vocals are not dominant on the M100 and I honestly prefer that so I like it more than the V-Motor XS. Let's talk about the ear pads because a lot of people insisted that you have to get the XL pads with the M100 because they are like a direct upgrade over the stock pads you get a much more spacious sound um, everything just sounds better with the XL pads uh, and it kind of makes you wonder, well, why would they give you the stock ear pads in the first place? Well, now that I've had a chance to listen to both of the ear pads, I think things aren't quite as clear cut as that. Uh, yes, with the XL pads, you do get an increased sound stage and you get increased noise isolation uh, with the XL pads. One thing, though, I do find with the XL pads, the Mids just take a, a little step back, particularly the lower mids. The uh, vocals just become a little more recessed with the XL pads compared to the stock pads. Uh, also, I feel like the bass gets slightly more boomy, slightly more loose with the, uh, uh, with the XL pads. So I don't think that the XL pads are a direct upgrade over the stock pads in terms of sound. In terms of comfort and noise isolation, I think they are a decent investment. But if you think that you already like the stock pads on your M100, I, th I think you could get away with saving yourself $20. So when we talk about bass on the V-Motor M100, the bass on the M100 is really full, it's really rich, um, you know, it's, it's a substantial amount of bass, it's definitely much more bass than your average headphone, but it's not the tightest bass in the world. Uh, it's just a bit bloomy, uh, it's just a bit loose, it's, it's not sloppy, it's not like, it's better than your average kind of fart cannon or something like that, but compared to something like the M50X, I really do think that the bass line on the M50X is more tight, and personally, I prefer the kind of slam on the M50X compared to the M100. But if the amount of bass is your priority, I think you could do a lot worse than the M100. It still has a, uh, a bass line that works really well for electronic music without sounding you know, completely all over the place. So in terms of treble, like the rest of V-Motor's headphones, the very highest frequencies on the V-Motor M100 are rolled off. So 
Um, you do get smoothed over S kind of sounds. You don't get an aggressive, sibilant sort of uh, sound to it. But at the same time, you lose out on a lot of the kind of shimmer or the kind of detail in those higher frequencies. As a result, it sounds just a little closed in and a little congested. That said, the V-Motor M100 doesn't isolate uh, from external noise very well in the first place. So. Uh, I think it's probably a good thing that there's not that much aggressive treble because you're going to turn up the volume higher than average on the M100 and you don't want to damage your hearing that way. I personally prefer the treble again on the M50X. I think it has more kind of sparkle. It has a lot more uh, bite to it and I personally prefer the kind of detail and resolution that you get from that sound. But some people find the treble on the M50X metallic sounding. So again, different strokes for different folks. So overall, the V-Motor M100 is a warm, rich sounding bassy headphone that's gonna work better with more kind of modern genres of music like studio, hip hop, uh, uh, electronic music, pop music, that kind of thing. That isn't to say that it sounds terrible with other genres. It sounds okay, it's a decent all-rounder. But when you listen to things like violins, there's still enough energy to make them sound lively, but there's a lot missing in the upper frequencies that uh, you lose out on a lot of texture and resolution. So if you're going to listen to a lot of classical music, this is not the headphone for you, but I think you already know that. So I'm planning to make a comparison video between the M100 and the M50X and the Bose QC25 and uh, the Beat Studio 2013 where I can really get into the nitty gritty of these headphones because they are pretty popular. Uh, but I would say just specifically compared to the M50X, I prefer the sound of the M50X. I think it sounds more tighter, it sounds more detailed, and the M50X is a cheaper headphone. So, you know, this is still my pick for kind of a uh, a round ear headphone if you have around $300 to spend. That and of course the uh, NAD Viso HP50 which is an extremely capable can. The M100 I still think is a really good headphone. I do like this headphone. It's a lot of fun to listen to and I definitely recommend it to anyone who is after uh, a bassy headphone which wasn't you know completely uh, incompetent in the in the rest of the frequencies. Uh, anyway, click the like button if you found this video helpful and consider popping a tip in the tip jar. Um, you can talk to me on Facebook at facebook.com slash LachlanLikesAThing and on Twitter at LachlanLikesAThing. Thanks again to everyone who contributed to make this uh, review possible and thanks to all my regular subscribers. Happy listening.